All right, I'm back. Uh, welcome back to this complete making off for video game sound effects. I'm synthesizing, creating sound effects for a video game. Actually, it's a 2D space game. And so far, I've synthesized sounds for the laser beam. All right. And I realized that my mouse cursor wasn't visible because I was recording something else before and it didn't... Yeah. So that was probably a bit not fun. Well, what to do? Uh, let's continue. I've created the sound effects for the beam. Now let's create the sound effects for the actual... for the little, like, plasma gun like this. So we have these projectiles and I think... What we should do is do a single sound effect and we could even try and reuse what something we've made already. It's often a good idea. For example, we could we could duplicate this one. Uh, maybe move it to the bottom. Yeah, and see which frame. Oh, which frame. Here, the projectile appears. I'm gonna call this plasma shot. Yeah, obviously it's way too long. So I'm gonna disable the CQ for now. Whoa, it's, uh, I think it's a bit too big. Maybe, maybe it's not a problem. Now, remember, we're not using Surge's um, audio effects because they don't work very well in this LV2 version that I'm using. And also, I've, I've realized that LFOs above 3 don't work well at all, too. You know what? Actually, I'm going to hide this and create a sequence of those so that we actually cover multiple shots. So let's, we have one. Oh, actually it's a little bit before this note starts. Here it is, okay. Now, where does the next shot start? Here it is, okay. I think that the screencast wasn't perfectly um, like capturing every single frame and we have a little bit of okay we have another shot here so basically you see we are now making like a mock-up and if that works with the video reference we have then we'll be, we can be sure that the sound we're, we're making is, is gonna work good in the game so then we process it to make it ready for actual export and that's it. We deliver. As you can see, the footage doesn't look like the shots are actually occurring in a like a steady rate. It's more of a it's it's quite jittery. doesn't look very smooth. Okay, I think that's that will do. Am I missing something? No, I'm not. Okay. Um, let's go back to our synthesizer. First thing, I'm gonna make this sound shorter, so amplitude envelope down. Also, where is my playhead? Here is my playhead, okay. Alright. Too short. Oh, I think we could go up with this Oh, maybe with this up. 
Actually, we might not need a fam for this. Hmm. Is there a category in it? Really? I don't see it anywhere. <laughs> Give me the init category. <laughs> I want init. I want to init the patch. Why is there no init? Oh, I right clicked and there's a different list. I think it's a list of actual... <laughs> what is this, by the way? Oh, oh, it's the same thing. Ah, all right, good. Okay, I'm gonna disable the FM. So we have just a single thing. Um, and maybe I will just clear all like LFO and envelope. All right, nice, good. Extend range. Okay, now we can make this actually affect our pitch. Let's make it shorter. Okay, that's a little bit painful, but Actually, it might not be a bad thing. It might be a good thing that it's a bit painful. <laughs> now, it's very simple and it's lacking some characters, so I would like to try and maybe add a little bit of something else. Okay, that's a very, very low salt of wave. Maybe we can... Do something interesting with it. Unison voices. What about making this stereo? Unison detune. Okay, what a... Huh. All right, so we're uh, using a super saw to kind of reinforce that sound. Okay, but we need to do it very delicately. All right, and of course the highs are a little bit painful. What about the feedback? Is that useful? What does it do? It's uh, going for the wave shaping. Oh, that's better. That is better. We could also use this third oscillator as uh, another like side wave to like include a little bit of a low end thump. I would like to have a little bit of low frequencies here. Mm, it's a gun. So it should have some kick. Oh, oh we're distorting. All right, that's not bad. Yeah, but we need to extend the range of that. Maybe that's it. How about making... <laughs> okay. What if we used our comp filter? And we can use it on just the sort of... Uh... Oh, oh, ah, oh no, oh, nah. Okay, now it's going through both filters always, just this is the stereo. Okay. Let's use this to enhance... Oh, I'm seeing... Uh. Ha! It's in Actually, it's enhancing our laserness.
Okay, I wonder if we could use a little bit of noise maybe to like create a, a tiny little bite or like a high pass thing. I wonder maybe we could use a different scene for that. So let's go to scene B. And we can have them duel. Yeah, so they play at the same time. I'm gonna go keep it single first so I can control this easier. All right, so no oscillator, but noise generator. And also stereo, please. Yay! Now a filter. Let's use a bandpass. Okay. Uh, narrower, please. What the hell? Oh! Let's go all the way. Wait, that does, doesn't sound like it's actually working correctly. Maybe it's just way too... Okay, it's not steep enough. It wasn't narrow enough. Now I'm going to use an LFO to... Uh, I'm, I'm going to change it to an envelope. And... Uh, do some... Some of that. Also, let's change the... Let's deform it. Oh, the sustain is in zero. Let's make it faster. Let's increase the factor. And also decay. Alright, how do they sound together? Oh, I like that! Simple, but effective. Oh, there's also bright for our sortie oscillators. I don't hear much difference, but I like the th the thought that it might be a little bit brighter. Oh, this is painful. Yeah, uh, we need to correct the EQ. Let's see our pre EQ frequency response. Okay, maybe we can boost something around like the lower mids. Oh yeah, that's nice. I like that. Give me another, give me another bell. What if I used a resonant high pass filter to boost lows a bit? Snare. No, that doesn't make sense in the context of the game at all. I think this is cool. Like, this doesn't look like a very heavy projectile, so it do wouldn't make sense to have it, like, you know, like, let's save it for the explosion, okay? Mm. All right, I think this sound effect is pretty much good to go. What is that, though? Oh, we copied it from a different. From a different region. Actually, we could use that. Ah, all right. Now the question is: Do we want this to be a single sound effect that's played over and over, or do we want to make multiple different variations, like you know, pitch it up and down? Because we could make a bunch of different variants, and actually... There's no hurt in doing that. If the game can randomize it a bit, it's gonna sound nicer. Okay, they differ very slightly, but you know, if you're gonna hear a sound over and over like hundreds of times, maybe it's good to have a little bit of variation of, of variation in it. Uh, all right, I'm not sure if maybe I'll increase the spacing between them so I can very clearly like you know I'm gonna oh I can't time stretch. 
MIDI. Or I can, okay. I'm gonna shorten them. Select all and... Good. Let's see the levels. Is it like touching the limiter or not? I think it's pretty pretty okay. It's it's close to the limiter. That's good. All right. Let's screen the regions. Weapons. Plasma. And I'm gonna call it shot and underscore zero one. And what I'm gonna do is just copy and paste that same thing and then change the numbers and I'm going to use a little trick to speed it up so you'll learn that too okay now let's go to window locations and this little interface is gonna let us edit the region names very quickly so I'm gonna just copy and paste and I'm just gonna change the numbers Two zero three zero four zero five zero six. All right. Now I can close that, and we have our regions. Good. Now let's export that. Alt E, and I'm gonna deselect all, and select the plasma shots. Okay. Let's export and see how it looks. Alrighty, so here we have the analysis of all of our exported files. They all start right on the start, which is really good. And they look pretty okay. Uh, they're not peaking, they don't need to. Like, this sound shouldn't be deafening. We're gonna save it for the explosion, again. Uh, I think it's good. Yeah, nice. I will actually send it to GDQuest. Let me do that. All right, so that's second, uh, another sound effect done. What I'm gonna do also is put a location marker and it's called this plasma shot. Just for myself, so it's easier to find it if I'm gonna be like tweaking it. It's gonna insert it here. It's Beam. <laughs> All right, let's see what's next in this to synthesize, to make sound effects for. All right, it's flying. So we need a, an engine sound. All right, I think uh, let's create a new MIDI track. Actually, we could use Zenfusion for that. Change things a bit. Zen. Actually, I'm going to add three instances of it right away. Because why not? Also, I'm thinking we could... We could actually, um, just to save ourselves um, processing power, we could disable the tracks we are not going to export. So this deactivate... Uh, yeah, let's deactivate all of that. And that's going to lower our CPU load because Ardor is not going to process all of that. And because we've already exported these files, we're not going to re-export them because we don't have a reason to do that. So it's going to save us some CPU cycles, needlessly processing effects that are not contributing anything to what we're doing right now. Um, I think I've hidden the video play preview. Okay. All right. How do we do this? Should this be also a start, middle, end? I guess it should be. Okay, let's start out by creating a note that will like last the whole time period of, of this thing existing. Okay, I think the motion actually starts before that, like... It starts here. Yeah. 
All right, and ends here. Actually, I think I can do. Oh, oh no, J and K. Oh, K. Okay. Uh, oh, it doesn't work for nodes. All right, it works for regions. All right, it ends right about there. Okay, I guess that the throttle in this game just works like you press down a key and it starts throttling, you release it, it stops. So it should be pretty much the same pattern as with the laser gun, the laser beam, where I'm going to call this thrust, where you have a start, you have a middle and you have an end. Possibly even just the start, this is the middle loop could work. But we could embellish it with a start and end. All right, I think I'm gonna start with something noisy, and like go for a, like a rocket engine sound, and then we'll we'll see what it, where it leads us. So I'm gonna open Zenat Sub FX. Actually, it's Infusion. It's the new user interface. So I want to make sure that they both fit very well on the screen, so we can see everything clearly. Okay, and let's maybe. We could start with the subsynth, which is actually an additive synthesizer. Well, under the hood it's not, but what it does, it generates a white noise and then uses a, a bunch of, bi of bandpass filters that create harmonics. But if we increase the bandwidth of these filters, we, we get a nice, like, uh, smooth noise frequency spectrum. So we can just sculpt in noise with this. Uh, why don't I have audio output from it, though? That's strange. Oh, maybe I haven't enabled it. No, I have. Wait. Okay, why isn't it... Am I on a different... Ah, okay, I was on a different MIDI channel on my keyboard. That's, that's sorted out. All right, so we have something like that. So this sounds more like a pipe with, with something in it, like a pressurized pipe or, or a, some other pressurized container. Maybe if we can reduce the bandwidth. All right, that sounds weird. No, not really. We can make these inharmonic because we don't want this to resemble anything, you know, cyclic or tonal sound. We just want this random, really weird. No, this sounds really much, very much like, uh, pretty much like a pipe full of gas. All right, let's use a bandpass filter on top of that. Make it narrow. Now I would like to distort this. I'm gonna go to Effects, Part Insertion, and Insert Distortion. Oh, I enabled Add Synth. No. Now, by default, it makes it mono, so I'm gonna enable Stereo and also move this all the way here so it's full Stereo. All right, not that great. This is dry wet, by the way. So we can have a little bit of harsh distortion mixed in or, you know, different variants. You can also use different functions. Stereo. Also, this is low passing our sound. How about the asymmetric? So it's low pass. Okay, I think now we can bar band pass this again. And we can use this. 
high pass and low pass. I think it's a bit harsh. The distortion is very crackly and doesn't sound very pleasant. Now this sounds a bit too low. Maybe if I up this... I think this could be one layer, but we need more. So I'm going to go to the second part. I'm going to middle click here to disable the first part. Now we have a second part. We can have 16 of these. Now by default, let's go to the part settings. Each part plays on a different MIDI channel. So if I go part three, it plays on channel three, but I want all of them to play on MIDI channel one so that they all play together. Uh, for the same note. That's what I want. Okay, let me... I need to go to the bathroom. Give me a, give me a second. All right, I'm back. Okay, now it's, we're doing the engine sound. And we're doing the second layer of that. So, let's see. First layer, and the second layer. Okay, so I want to I want a lower noise. So let's go to the modulation and change this oscillator to pink noise, maybe. Yep. Now let's go to the voice filter. Enable the low pass. Okay, I think what we can do is like play with the attacks and releases of the envelopes and then um, bounce or record all of that into audio and manually stip, just like cut off the start, the middle and the end, loop the middle and have it all like loop together nicely and, and go one into the other. So I think we could use some like uh, maybe like an envelope. Just, I like this to be neutral. Yeah. And then again, when it stops, it could uh, like ramp down a bit. So release time. Then we need a little bit of release on the global amplitude. Uh, I think our global, sorry, I think our attack is a little bit too long. Maybe up the real. And also make this noise stereo by just uh, increasing the unison to two. We could lower the spread. So it's not 100% stereo. But it's still a little bit more wide. Okay, let's add some distortion. Make it stereo. make this a bit more uh, stereo. Okay, how, how about two layers, one on top of each other? <laughs> okay, our first layer starts immediately and it's very off-putting. Let's go there and add a little bit of amplitude. Right, doesn't sound very good. Um, what about the filter? 
Oh no, that's frequency. Oh, frequency could also do. Yeah! And release also, just we need to have the amplitude give us some release. Filter. We have a filter here, and we could also like use the envelope to Yeah. I think the releases of our amplitude are a bit too short. Maybe. Okay, let's switch to the second one and maybe change the amplitude to there. I'm not sure, it's a little bit long. I, I don't know if I like that that much. Okay, I will definitely want some high frequency components. I'm gonna go to voice free, uh, part three. I'm gonna mute this other two. Okay, I already changed the MIDI channel to MIDI channel one so it plays. And I'm gonna actually use frequency modulation to generate that. So I'm gonna have quite a lot of that. All right, let's detune it. And also change the frequency so it's out of tune with the bass waveform. Now, okay, the oscillator, I'm gonna add a bunch of random harmonics. Make it more noise-like. Good. Now let's use a voice filter. Make it a high pass. All right. Could also use a global filter and I want to change it to a notch. And I want this notch to like, go up and down depending on the like, yeah, like make it ramp up and down. Or maybe the other way around. Maybe longer. <laughs> I have the release value up. Oh yeah. Sure, I just need uh, some amplitude so the release can be heard. I'm gonna change, switch it to free mode so I can add like, ah, oh no, add a point. And I want the release to like have a some time, but then decay quickly. Not just be decaying all the way through. All right. Uh, I think it's kind of, kind of, kind of okay. Not perfect. Like I'd like some. I like some some more modulation maybe happening there. Maybe I will use a little bit of a phaser. But I'm a bit afraid that it might not loop very well. Also, it's very loud. So I think I'll enable all the other parts. Ah, uh, the attack doesn't sound good. It's too quick. It just attacks right away. All right, let's go to the mixer and basically lower the amount of... Hmm. I'm not sure it's... <sighs> I'm not sure it's really nice. Um, I think I might try something else, like a non-propellant based sound, like something more like, uh, you know, electromagnetic based engine that doesn't really exhaust gaze, gas. Or 
maybe this could be really nice if we just smash it with multiband compression. LSP multiband compressor stereo. There it is. I think it might actually be just much better. Oh, I added to the master bus. No, cut, thrust. Here is where I want to put it. All right, let's give it 20 decibels of gain on the start. And now set the ratios to 10. And gain down. I think I like that more. I will also compress it after the fact anyway. Before this compressor didn't seem to work properly. Oh, but it does now. I think it must be something. It must have been something with my signals being weird. Okay, I would want to use an EQ before that compressor to, like, uh, cut some of the lows. I don't want them to affect this as much. And also there's something annoying in this, in the mids I want to get rid of. Possibly something more. Oh yeah. But we're missing somebody. Uh, maybe I'll try to compensate. Okay, I think this sound doesn't work that well. I think we need to try something else. So I'm gonna uh, just copy this region to a different track, mute it, call this thrust two, and I'm gonna try a different sound entirely. And what I wanna try now is a FEM. Maybe I will go with Surge because like, Zen has quite nice FM, but it has a little bit glitchy and it doesn't always like produce clean results. It, it has some noise and distortion, so maybe I will try... Maybe I'll actually move this and... Just call this Zen. And call this... Thrust 2 and... Use Surge. Of course, we need to disable strict I.O. so our audio is fed to the output. All right, we have it. What note is that, by the way? It's D. Oh. Yeah, we can move it one octave. Or two. All right. Let's do it. Let's make this FM based. So mm, I want an envelope to like grow from this. Yeah, nice. about release. What's oh, long? Hmm. And now look. Okay. Oh, this Oh, 
Okay, it's kind of, it's okay, but there's nothing happening in the middle and then we need some pulsation, we need some movement in there. And also it gets thin when it goes to the, to the middle, so maybe... Maybe, maybe... I can change the ratios. Yeah. Hey, very metallic. Let's reduce the amount of the um, envelope. Huh. Again, this sounds interesting, but I'm a little bit afraid it might be too realistic and gritty. Uh, let's see if we can kind of... What about M2 amount? And M3 amount too. All right, M3 is arbitrary. Ah! Oh, I like this tuning of the f different frequencies. That's nice. This is 1.0. What if we do 2.0? If we go to in something, oh, it doesn't doesn't sound harmonic. What if we go free? Nice. Let's give it more. Let's see. Okay. I think what we need is a little bit of wobble in here. So we, maybe we could do sine wave, but like. Oh, okay, that's not gonna work. All right, I see. I understand now. So okay, so let's keep this one as an amplitude clearly, and then just add a little bit of LFO on top of that. Maybe change the ratio a tiny bit. Ah, no, 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 no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, Three point zero. Okay, I want to assign this as a modulation, not as a. All right, that's pretty crazy. It's getting crazy very quickly. All right. How about trying different octaves? No pain. Yeah, this reminds me, you know, <laughs> I've been doing some... I have been doing some sound effects for a spaceship some time ago for a client, but, uh, well, I can't really show you. Uh, but I am using some experience of that. But that, they were going for realistic sounds, so maybe this won't work that well. Maybe if I blend, maybe if I blend the two together, it's gonna sound great. Also, I want to use some more layers of FM, so I'm going to use this thing. as another modulator, and I'm going to um, modulate the amount of that. Oh, that's way too much. Huh. Uh, what if we do this in stereo? And now, for example, change the unison voices a bit. Is, the, is this going to create some stereo -finicness? No, but nice wobbly wobbliness. All right. <laughs> I think if we filter the two sounds and like blend them together, we might get something really nice. Let's do that. I'm going to copy. Yeah, I'm actually going to 
Like use both of them. Move this one up. Right. Let's copy the multiband compressor and paste it here. I also want to add a little bit of a early reflections reverb. Just to give this a tiny bit of space. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not as much. Oh, I think it broke. I think Dragonfly River broke. Oh no, it was LSP multiband that broke. Or maybe Dragonfly broke LSP multiband. Okay, let's delete the multiband compressor. I'm going to save this, by the way. I'm going to copy it again. What if I use a different note? Maybe not just an octave different, maybe something else. All right, it doesn't work. Lower. Nah. All right, let's bandpass the two sounds and see what we get. R door, a low pass, no, high pass. A high pass, low pass filter. This is a great plugin. It's a stock Ardor plugin. What it does, it gives you two filters, high pass and low pass, and you can simply choose what you want. All right, so I want that part of this sound and maybe the low lows from this sound, I don't know. So we started a 200, we're ending at 200. Let's go with up of 400. Let's go with less. Let's go with a less steep filter. I'm thinking that this sound might be way too involved. Uh, also, what if we pipe? Move this on, on up an octave. Ah, uh, I think I misclicked. I think I like that better. What if we make it louder? Okay. What if we give it more highs? What if we start it a bit later so it doesn't like come in as early? I think that's a sound. I'm not sure if it's the sound we need. Uh, what we could do also is give them, give it a common bus. So I'm going to create a bus here. Audio buses, stereo, position before selection. Uh, I'm going to call this thrust. I have, I have a habit of creating, of calling buses with all capital letters it helps me differentiate between them so now these these two will feed their sound here instead of to the master so now i can apply like you know another layer of compression uh, to maybe glue them together yeah Oh, I think it works pretty cool, pretty well. 
this is starting a little bit too late. And this has way too much early reflections, in my opinion. Okay, now what we need to do is bounce this to audio and cut it up into start, middle and end so that we can uh, deliver it and play it in the game right. Right, so what I'm gonna do is just record this on the looped. All right, there was an X run, but it was before anything happened really, so I don't care. Uh, sometimes Ardor doesn't refresh well, so I just cut this region it does, so yeah, that's all. Now I'm going to mute these two regions, so that this is the only thing that plays. So let's, where's, where does the uh, actual, okay. Okay, I think it's here. Now, if I press S, you can see an Ardor slices where my playhead is, and that's because this is where the edit point is set. It's it's set to playhead. It could be good for this purpose. I think this could be the the end. Uh, now. Let's separate them and see if this loops. It pretty much does, I don't think we need to do anything else. As you remember, Ardor creates short crossfades, so this actually should just work right now. So, the game will have to, like, you know, smartly start this sound right after this one. And we can, like, simulate what happens if we play them in, in sequence. I'm gonna maybe snap to. Oh. Can I just snap to uh, region bounds? There was an option like that before in Ardor. I don't know if there is an option for that now. I think if I hold Alt, it just snaps to. Okay, okay. Now let's imagine we are playing this loop three times and then it ends somewhere in the middle. Ah, okay, I'm not snapping when I don't want to. And then we play the end. All right, it will, will that sound natural? Okay, apart from this thing not being aligned, I think it sounds pretty good. I think our little simulation. I think it proves that this works. Uh, let's create the markers and export the sound and then test it in Audacity, make sure it sounds like it should. So I'm gonna create this, let's call it um, thrust underscore start. Let's call this thrust underscore end. Oh no. That, uh, this one is end, okay. And this one is loop. Thrust underscore loop. All right. Let's save this project and go to the export dialog. Time span, I'm gonna select, deselect all of that and go start, thrust start, thrust loop, thrust end. All right, channels, looped. Yes, we're actually exporting everything from looped. Maybe we should call it bounce. I think we can, can we rename it here? No, we can't, okay. All right, let's export and analyze and see. Good. So this is our end, it looks good. Ardor isn't playing it well. This is loop and this is start. All right, let's uh, load it up into Audacity. All right, so here is our start, loop, and end. What we're gonna do is first play them in order. Oh wait, I'm gonna make you hear it too. All right.
right? I think it should work now if we copy and paste this a bunch of times, then delete part of that, and I'm not even applying any fade outs, I'm just cutting in the middle, so, well, that was lucky. So it, there could be a click, but well, let's see if it will mask it. No, it didn't mask it, there was a click. Okay, so the actual game should make a little fade out if we want to have this loop nice. So we will need the game to perform a tiny, tiny fade out. And then I think it should work. Yep. And you see, we don't notice that there's any gap here. All right, so the files are actually properly done. The implementation is going to require a little bit of work, but I think the result could be good. Now, this sound might not be the best, and maybe we'll need to redo that later. Maybe it'll gonna get rejected, I don't know. Uh, but that's sometimes what you just do. You make something and you ask if it sounds right to the client. And if it doesn't, you make it something else. Mm, yeah. All right, I think I'm gonna take a break now. So I'll see you later when we'll be making another sound. And that sound, another sound will be, what will it be? I think it's gonna be the explosion, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be the explosion, it's gonna be a nice one. I love explosions. All right, see you later.